today, today we celebrate the memory of the holy great martyr Barbara of Heliopolis in Syria. Before us, a large icon of St. Barbara with the piece of her relics is found here in the Kios. It's a great blessing for our parish to have this. And it's quite by the providence of God that we have received a piece of the relic of St. Barbara. The relics, almost her entire, the entirety of her relics is located in Kiev, in St. Vladimir's Cathedral. And a delegation was sent from that cathedral to Mount Athos at the turn of the 20th century during the consecration of a church and they presented a piece of her relic. And then shortly after that, in the, in the first years of the 20th century, our cathedral, St. Nicholas Cathedral was being built in New York City. And when the cathedral was consecrated, a delegation from Mount Athos came to be present for the celebration and also brought a piece of their piece, a relic of St. Barbara to give thanks to God for the consecration of a new cathedral. And then in 2006, by the providence of God, we too received a piece of this relic. It further testifies our connection with the homeland of the founders of this parish. Many of our founders came from Ukraine and Belarus, and we can see their love of their homeland here in our very church. We see an icon of St. Barbara over there in the corner. And we see an icon of the Theotokos with child, which is almost an identical copy of that icon painted by Vaznatsov in St. Vladimir's Cathedral in Kiev. And then for us to receive a piece of the relic of St. Barbara, whose relics in entirety are located in Kiev, further testifies our connection to the homeland of our founders. So it is obviously by the providence of God that we have such a holy treasure in our parish. And indeed, it is a holy treasure because of the life that St. Barbara left, um, led. She was born in a rich, illustrious family a pagan family. She had all the riches that she could have wanted from her father. Her father cared for her and even spoiled her beyond comprehension. But her family was pagan. But she looked at the surroundings, looked at the beauty of nature, looked at the stars in the sky, and saw the beautiful handiwork of God, saw the beauty of creation, and longed to know God. She eventually became acquainted with Christians in her city and tasted the sweetness of God's grace. And she was baptized. And she came to love our Lord with all her heart. So much so, so that every action was transfigured by her love for God. So much so that she began to refuse the riches offered to her. So much so that she re refused all those young men who were courting her for marriage so much so that she even refused all the overtures made to her by her father and the compromises that he was willing to make to make her happy only 
only if she would abandon her faith. But she refused. And eventually, she was tortured and killed by her very father. Hard for us to imagine. Yes, there are cases throughout history when parents kill their children, but usually out of anger and out of other things, but simply because Barbara was a Christian is a rarity. And why did she relent? Why, why did she hold fast to her faith? Why do all the martyrs hold fast to their faith, regardless of the suffering that they have to endure? It's because they taste the sweetness of God's grace, because they have come to see and to know the truth, because they have come to see the vanity of this life, because they have, see, they have come to see and understand how this life is so transitory and temporary. They have come to see the corruptness and sinfulness of this world. And they long for only holiness and righteousness and the peace of God's grace. St. Paul in his epistle to the Hebrews says, Here we have no continuing city, but we long for the one to come. We long for the heavenly Jerusalem. We long to be in closer and tighter relationship with God. And St. Barbara endured much. It's difficult for us to understand because we love our comfort. We love our conveniences. We love our material possessions. We love our way of life. And we try to fit God into it. But St. Barbara and the martyrs held all those things in opposite. Their love for God was their way of life. And living in this world had to conform to that. Sometimes we fall guilty, even though we strive to love God and strive to be good Orthodox Christians, sometimes we fall guilty to forcing God to conform to our way of life, forcing Him into our schedule rather than arranging our schedule, our way of life around him. St. Barbara tasted sweetness and joy that is heavenly. And for us to be good Orthodox Christians, brothers and sisters, does not mean that we have to forsake the world and go out into the desert. It does not mean that we have to abandon our children and not worry about supporting them. It does not mean that we all have to be monastic. But to be a good Orthodox Christians for us, it means that our love for God is first and foremost. And that everything else must be adapted to it and not vice versa. It means that the love that we have for God should move us to do good things, to sacrifice as parents, to sacrifice in humility. It means it must move us to arrange even our daily activities so we have time for prayer and for things that edify our soul. For us to be good Orthodox Christians, we too must lead a life that is like the martyrs, sacrificial. We sacrifice our will. Every husband and wife 
must understand that and must strive to do that for a good, healthy marriage. Every child must understand that in his or her reverence and love and respect for their parents. Every friend understands that when we see our other friend in need or when we need to ask for forgiveness and humility. The sweetness of God's grace, the sweetness of living in His presence requires us to sacrifice our will. We are the servants of God. And the martyrs, especially St. Barbara, understood that. In humility, in patience, and in love, she sacrificed her will to God and found life, eternal life. So for us to have a piece of her relic, for us to stand here in church and to celebrate her memory, for us to stand here and offer up our petitions to her so that she may intercede for us, is a great blessing for us here. And may it inspire us. May her prayers help us. May her example move us to likewise arrange our life to conform to God, to arrange our life so that we sacrifice our will to God and to arrange our life so that the love that we have for God is always first and foremost. Then we will taste sweetness even in this life. And once we taste it, we will never want to lose it again. O holy great martyr Barbara, pray to God for us. Amen.